I started smoking, first started smoking weed when I was in college when I was 18 years old. Um, long time ago, people. Uh, and so I was there probably at the, you know, at the very beginning of when weed pot uh, was starting to become popular with people. And it was, it was a real interesting experience because it was a cultural experience, even back then, because not everybody on campus was smoking and you were kind of considered, you know, the hippie and you had the long hair and the beads and the sandals. So it really was a very cultural aspect to it. And during the late 60s, early 70s, um, this is when it was starting to become big and, and was also starting to become kind of part of the overall movement. Um, and it was, it was quite interesting to see because it really was, it was the, the, frat fraternity people and then the can't the weed people the pot people and it was like almost two different worlds that were occurring back then and it was because before that it always been that you had you'd go to college you'd pledge a sorority you had a certain way of life and then that started switching up in the late 60s early 70s and i think cannabis well, weed pot cannabis was part of that Oh, first of all, let me talk about how we used to buy it. You found your dealer. You found the person who was having whatever it was that you were going to be purchasing. And there weren't that many. So you really had a very limited of any selection uh, of to, what cannabis to purchase. And you really didn't know. Can I say, when it comes down to it, you had absolutely no idea you know, what you were purchasing. There wasn't any testing going on. Um, in fact, at one point, when I was at, I went to the University of Kansas, at one point the school was, and the school doctors were actually working with the dealers who were bringing drugs into the campus. And so they would test it so that if there was any bad reactions and people came to the campus hospital, they would know how to treat it. Very, very interesting. Most people, you know, don't know about that. But so somebody could come in and first of all, you'd buy a, a lid or a two finger lid and it would cost you $10 or supposedly it was coming in from Mexico or you had Thai weed or, you, you know, you had a uh, Acapulco Gold. So you had all of these names, but did we have any idea what it really was? No. And so you had no idea whether you were going to just be having a fun high with your friends, a fun time with your friends. It may be a little heavier than that, or it could be like you weren't getting anything off of it. Uh, but there was no way. You don't go back to your dealer and say, hey, this wasn't any good. I want my money back. You know, that, that just wasn't, that wasn't part of it. But that was the way the world was back then. And it was illegal, so you had to be extremely careful because, I mean, I, although I was very involved in politics on campus um, and I was doing cannabis, I knew I was probably going to end up in the corporate world, and I did not want to have been arrested and put in jail, as so many people were. Um, so you were just very careful about who you talked to, and plus there were narcs on campus, so you had to be very careful of you know, who you discussed what with. So it really made, forced it to be somewhat of an underground, it was an underground type of situation, so it puts you into this smaller group of people. Um, as I said, quality, we had no idea. And even now I look back and I go, I can't believe that I smoked what I did and not knowing what was in it, um, I'm really lucky to be healthy at my age, I must say. Uh, and that's what I think is really great now that you um, know the quality. It, it's much better for your health and you can use it much more as of a wellness product than just getting, getting high. Not that there's anything wrong with getting high, I love it, but it also serves lots of other functions. Legal tested cannabis, I think is fantastic. I mean, it's something that back 50 years ago, we would have hoped for. I mean, what's going on right now is was our pipe dream many years ago, the idea that we could walk into a shop and buy something 
that was legal, that we knew what it was. Uh, I mean, was just what we wanted, but we did not ever really expect it to happen. Uh, and I remember the first time I went to Amsterdam and went to one of the coffee shops. It was the absolute coolest thing for me to go in there and they go, oh, well, excuse me, here's the menu. You know, do you want this? Do you want this? Oh, do you want to roll it yourself? Do you want to pre-roll? And it was like hippie haven. I mean, it, it was like total, total happiness. Um, and I actually smoked openly over there. Um, I had had a job that I was calling um, lobbying and doing advocacy work in Washington, D.C. So I had to be extremely careful about my consumption when I was in the U.S. because if it was found out that I had been smoking cannabis, then my effectiveness, excuse me, then my effectiveness in Washington, D.C. would have been diminished. Uh, so the fact that it's now legal, I can go to a store, I know it's been tested, I know where it's coming from, I know the type of product, because that was another thing, is, as I said earlier on, that we didn't know what it was, what we were getting, and now we do. So if I want something that I just want to relax, I want to, I'm going to do a night at home by myself, and I'm going to take a bath, and I'm going to turn on music and just relax, I know what to buy. Uh, or if I'm going out to a party and I want it to be a little bit livelier, you know, I know that I buy a different type of cannabis and product. So it's made it that we really have those choices. And also some of the issues is before some people not knowing what you were going to be buying. Some people said, I got paranoid, you know, back and I never tried it again because the time I tried it, I got paranoid. Well, that's changed. And now when you buy legal cannabis, you can go in there and say, okay, here's what, you know, here's what I want. Here's the event I'm going to, or here's what I'm going to be using it for. And to let you know in the past, you know, I was a little paranoid and they can go, okay, well, let's talk about what type of brand, what type of product would be good for you and how you actually can start consuming it again um, and not have that same worry. We definitely talk about cannabis. Well, it's in the news. First of all, it's in the news. I mean, there is not a day that goes by that a state isn't considering making it legal or how do we make it legal? How do we do this? So it is being put in everybody's face all the time. And also with it being legal, what I think is so much fun is people are coming out of the closet who wouldn't even talk about it. I mean, I have a group of friends that I hang out with, we go to the bars, we have our happy hours, we do, we do that. But did we ever really talk about cannabis, even though they knew that I was involved in cannabis, we just didn't discuss it. Once it became legal here in California, it was like the floodgates had opened. Everybody was talking about when they used to, oh, and I still do it now, and I still do this. So it was really quite funny. And I even had an experience where I saw a cousin um, obviously, I've known for decades. And about two years ago, we got together. Uh, she's actually a little bit older than I am. And because I was there for a cannabis conference, we talked about that. And I found out that she hadn't been inviting for years, as I had been, but we just never discussed it. Uh, and I was just like, I'm going, really? I mean, that's just amazing that you didn't talk about it. And then I even have some younger nephews that are not younger now, they're like in their 40s. And we, even though they knew I was involved, we never invited together. It was just something that they kept separate and it just wasn't part of our relationship. And not that it is now, but the fact we can talk about it. And then you can talk about the legalization. You can talk about the different companies getting involved, the different conferences that are going on. So, and people now come to me um, because I've been involved, people will come to me since I'm so openly involved and ask me questions. And I answer what I can, but I don't have all the answers. And I think nowadays still nobody has all the answers because we haven't been able to do the research. It's just becoming legalized by state and all that. But people are now talking and they're interested. 
And people my age, and I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but people are much more looking at it as, oh, is it a stress relief? I need some stress relief. Oh, can I use it? Are there brands or type of cannabis that I can use for sleep? I mean, we always think about cannabis and weed and pot, but you have to think about there's THC, there's CBD, there's CBN, which is what you use for sleep. There's another strain that you can use if you want to reduce your um, appetite. It's, no, it's not like years ago when you would get stoned and you'd eat everything in sight. Um, <laughs> no, there's actually, they're learning more about the different strains and what it can do for you. And I think people my age, you know, we've, People are on medication, you know, luckily, knock on wood, I'm not, but they're on medication for high blood pressure, they're on medication for different aspects of their life, and they would, there's always side effects to some types of medication, and they would love to be able to get off those medications and to be able to use something as natural as cannabis that would take care of things, just relax them a little bit, you know, that they can, I don't know how to describe it, but there's this thing about just being able to sit back and relax and do an edible or smoke a joint. And it's just the same as having a drink. I mean, just like when you go out with your friends and going out during happy hour and having a drink or going to a party where they have bars set up. You could always drink. Well, nowadays, when I go to parties, it's very interesting because they'll still have a bar set up, but there'll be a group of people over here that are the, the smoking group. So they'll, they'll smoke and nobody thinks anything of it. And if you want to have a joint or get an edible, you can go over there or you can go to the bar over here and you know have a drink. So it's really given us a lot more opportunity to be able to enjoy ourselves. If you're an older adult trying cannabis for the first time, first of all, I would definitely recommend that if you're on medication, you check with your doctor. Not all doctors know about cannabis, so you just have to be aware of that. This is something that they're just learning. It's just like doctors don't know all that much about nutrition. Usually they've had one course in medical school and that's it. So considering that they've probably had zero courses in cannabis, uh, they'll, they only know about the data, the research that's out there. One thing may work for you and another may not. And that's one of the issues that really is still happening right now is that we don't quite, the empirical data is not all in. There needs to be so much more research that we couldn't do before because the government didn't allow it because it was an illegal schedule one drug. But now more and more research is going on. But you may find that one product works for you and another doesn't. So don't judge your ex first experience um, as the end all and the be all. Take that as, okay, I didn't react well to that. And then when you go back to the bud tender, then you go, okay, this didn't, this didn't do this for me. I got this. And then they'll go, oh, okay, well, let's try this. And it also can be, you can be, let's say, smoking or taking an edible with a friend. They can react to it in one way and you can react to it in another way. And that's once again, one of the things that is, the research is really gonna be helping because some of them, like there's one company that's coming out with edibles that will, you'll react with within 15 minutes. Um, a lot of times edibles may take half hour, 45 minutes, an hour before you react to it. So if you're going to, let's say you're going to a bar and other people are drinking, you know how you react to one drink, two drinks, three drinks, whatever you, however many you do, and you know it's going to hit you at this time and how you're going to react. Cannabis will eventually get to that point. We're just not quite to that point, but you know, you know how, especially at this age, I mean, we know how our body reacts to things. I mean, even with food, I can tell you that if I ate something and I'm allergic to it, my body tells me it's not working for me. So I listen to my body and this is what you have to do with cannabis. You have to listen to what your body is telling you, how you react to it and what you want it for.
as I said, if you wanted just to go out and have a good time and party with your friends and go dancing, now that dancing is going to be back in, um, that's going to be one type of cannabis versus a quiet evening in that maybe you're talking about everything that's going on in the world. And that, that's your choice and your responsibility in order to know what you're doing and how you're reacting.